Hey guys, Phil here with the screencast of the directions to the CLIA lab, the radio astronomy of pulsars. This screencast will give a complete explanation on how to complete the lab on your own. This lab is one of the better ones because of how cool pulsars are. What happens is that a star far greater in size than our sun blows up, and all that is left is the core which shrinks down and is now small enough to fit in Estes Park. The core spins so fast that in some cases it completes a revolution in less than a second. Even more interesting is its gravity, which is so strong that it creates fields that shoot out excited electrons from a gravitational pull. We see these as beams of light, however, they are invisible and in the form of radio waves. As the pulsar spins, the beam sweeps, and if it passes by Earth, with each revolution, what we would see is a cycle of on-off, on-off. That period is more accurate than any atomic clock on Earth. Well, let's get started. Once you have op the lab open, the first thing we are going to do is click File, Login. The thing about this is it doesn't matter what you type in. All you have to do is click OK. Now that we are in the lab, what we are going to do is click File, Run, and then Radio Telescope. In the bottom, you can see the right ascension, but we need it to stop, so we are going to turn tracking on. Now we are going to click Hot List, and then view slash select. We're going to choose 0628-28 because it is a strong pulsar and will give a good reading. It will ask us to slew the coordinates and we will click yes. Now that it is slewed to the coordinates, we are going to click yes again. Now that we have our first pulsar, we will click receiver. It will bring up the tool that we will use to collect data. We start data collection by clicking mode and stop it by clicking mode again. What you see is the radio wave pulse as the beam from the spinning pulsar sweeps past Earth. What we want to find is the period, or how long it takes to spin. The frequency is like the channel of a radio station. We will change this later in the lab. The gain stretches the peaks so that they are easier to see. The first part of this lab is to find the period of this pulsar at six different frequencies. We are going to do this by measuring the time from one pulse to the next. Here's how. First, we are going to change the horizontal seconds so that we can have more peaks in one frame. Now we will click mode once to start the data collection and mode again to stop it. Secondly, we are going to left click to get a blue line and place it at the peak of the first pulse. Next, we are going to right click and place the white line at the peak of the tenth pulse. We will plug the blue number in to box one of the corresponding frequency on the spreadsheet. So take 0 0.8 or whatever your number is and place it here. Hit enter. Now we're going to go back and take the white number and put it in the corresponding frequency box two. So 12.56, 56, enter. For the number of periods, you will take the number of peaks minus one. We will repeat this for all six frequencies. For column E, we must give the formula to calculate the average period. Click on cell E5 and type equals, open parenthesis, C5 minus B5, close parenthesis slash d5 and then hit enter by starting with the equal sign we tell the computer that we want it to do math for us and everything that follows the equal sign is the formula we want to use rather than repeating this for the next five boxes simply click and drag cell e5 like this and it will copy the formula for us lastly we will answer this question when calculating the period of a pulsar, which frequency will give the best answer? For part two, we will repeat all the same steps as for part one. 
The difference is only in that when choosing the pulsar from the hot list, you will have to record the data from these three pulsars. You can use any frequency you choose, just be sure to record the frequency you used in box 1 of part 2. To complete part 3, you have to analyze the data from pulsars in one, part 1 and part 2 and order them from youngest to oldest. Now we are going to do part 4. On the spreadsheet for part 4, column F, we must enter this simple formula. Equals B34 minus B35. And then simply hit enter. Then click the bottom right corner and drag down to repeat this formula for the two cells below. For column G, you will notice we have given you the formula to save you some time. This will convert your data into a distance in parsecs. For this part, we want to look at three frequencies at the same time. We will accomplish this by clicking Add Channel and then Add Channel again. Set the frequencies to 400, 600, and 800. Click the Record button to turn it on. Now we're going to click Mode once to start data collection and once more to stop it. We have to verify the name of the pulsar. We do this by clicking yes in the window. Click yes again. And now we must save data. Make sure to save it in your network account. Although I will not because I am. Now we are going to left click to get the blue line in each of the data sets and place it on the first peak. It looks as though they didn't arrive at the same time. This happens because of the non-perfect vacuum of space. We will use this time delay to get the distance of the pulsar. Simply enter the three times into the boxes with their corresponding frequencies and it will average them. Simply repeat this for pulsar 2154-40. That concludes this Clio Lab. Good luck guys, get out there.